All right, whenever you're ready. Welcome. Near the beginning of your multivariate calculus course, you learn a vector operation called the cross product. The cross product turns out to be fundamentally useful in all kinds of applications and is woven tightly into the historical development of multivariable calculus that we still teach today. Sadly, the cross product is customarily presented as a magic recipe with poorly developed motivation. The purpose of this talk is to show how the cross product is an elegant, simple solution to an utterly natural problem. The context of that problem is the spiritual setting for differential calculus in the world of geometry. So we start with the question, what is differential calculus about? So what is differential calculus about? What do you think? Rates of change. Rates of change. Excellent. What else? Applications. Applications, yes. What kind? Uh, optimization problems. Great. Optimization. Any others? Related rates. Excellent. Excellent. I think these are great answers. Rates of change, I would say, is a philosophical answer to what differential calculus is about. And applications like finding maximums and minimums, related rates, that's, how, that's the motivation for why we spend all this time and effort on derivatives. But I'm going to give another answer. This is what I would call a spiritual answer because it gives a setting, a natural setting that unifies the theory and the application of derivatives. What differential calculus is about is flat approximations to curved things. Most of calculus one is about tangent lines to graphs of functions. That's the flat approximation, that's the curved thing. The power of calculus one and the use of derivatives comes from the simplicity of the tangent line. It is a simple thing compared to the complicated thing that you're trying to work with. This simple thing gives you the handle on the more complicated thing. Natural next step when you go to multivariable calculus would be a function, say, with two input variables, x and y, one output variable, z. Its graph now is a surface in three dimensions, and the thing that replaces the tangent line, the analog of the flat approximation to the curved thing, is now a two-dimensional tangent plane. This is what we're going to focus on. Each of these graphs and tangent objects has a natural sense of normal direction or perpendicular direction to the tangent thing inside of the space where they live. I'll show you what I mean. This tangent line has a perpendicular. All right, there it is. We never focus on that in, one dimension, in first semester calculus, but there is a perpendicular line to the tangent line. It becomes more useful and uh, more of a focus of study here in multidimensional setting where we have a two-dimensional plane. There's now a perpendicular line to that plane. Pardon my drawing. There's a line which is at 90 degrees to that plane, it's called the normal line. The power of the normal, or the perpendicular direction, is that the perpendicular determines the tangent thing. That is, if you know this direction, the normal direction, you can say what direction the tangent line is. It's at 90 degrees. That seems obvious, but hardly useful. Here, though, you see this could be a value. The tangent direction is given by a single vector, a single direction, and it tells you about the whole two-dimensional tangent space. It tells you about all these directions. And as you go up to more variables, you get uh, some efficiency there by having one vector that tells you all about the tangent hyperplane, which is the tangent object to the surface or the graph that you're interested in. That's why we're interested in normal directions. The two-variable version of this, that's the one in this picture, is the problem that leads to the cross product. 
Now, we have to start somewhere, so we start looking for guidance with the one variable problem. Okay, so we start with the problem of finding a normal direction in the plane. Here we start with a given direction a, b. We're looking for a perpendicular direction, in other words, a vector somewhere along this, this uh, perpendicular line. I'll call that the unknown vector u, v. We'd like to solve for the coordinates u and v. Well, the solution is very straightforward. We write down what we want. We want a, b perpendicular to u, v. We have an algebra tool for that. The, the dot product tells us when two vectors are perpendicular. The two vectors are perpendicular when their dot product is zero. That gives us an equation to solve, a u plus b v. There are many solutions, but there's a particularly simple or convenient one. Let's just put b over here. Let u be b. And then over here, I'll just put something which will cancel. I'll make v be negative a, and then the left-hand side works out. We get a times b plus b times minus a. We get 0. So there's a solution. b minus a will work. Gives us a normal or perpendicular direction to the given vector. Let's move on one dimension up to the problem of finding normal directions in three-dimensional space. This time, we have two given vectors, a, b, c, another one here, d, e, f. Together, those two vectors fill out or span a plane. Here's the plane that they live in. And we're looking for something perpendicular or normal to this plane at right angles to both of the given vectors. This one is the unknown. Let's call it UVW. The problem is, what is it? But the thought process will be very much the same. We don't need to invent new ideas. To find UVW, we have the dot product to satisfy ABC dot UVW is 0. That expresses the fact that UVW is perpendicular to ABC. We also have another equation, DEF dot uvw is zero, expressing the fact that def is perpendicular to uvw. This gives us two equations, au, bv, cw, that dot product is zero, du, ev, fw, that dot product is zero, and we need to solve. It looks worse because there are more variables. But in principle, it's really not worse. We still know there are going to be infinitely many solutions. Any vector along this line will do. We'll settle for anything convenient. And we'll just do something simple and convenient to get there. What do you do when you have multiple variables? You try to eliminate, make things simpler. In this case, let's try to eliminate w. I can eliminate w by multiplying the first equation by f the second equation by c, and subtract. You can see that's going to work because f, c, w in the expansion is going to cancel with minus f, c, w on the second line. w is gone. Here we have a, f, I'm going to gather. I'm going to gather, I'm thinking ahead in gathering terms. For u, I have a, f coming from here, minus c, d coming from here, and then my v term. Let's look at all the contributions to V. I've got a BF minus CE. That has to equal zero. Still a lot of letters, but if you look, this equation is exactly the same level of complication as this first one. Something times U plus something times V is zero. Something times U plus something times V is zero. We'll just borrow the solution we already worked out. We'll make this quantity exactly the same solution. Let u be this thing, bf minus ce. Just the same way over here, we let u be that coefficient v. And then we let v be the negative of the other. So v is minus af minus cd. And those will work. 
Now you only need to know what is W. I won't do this algebra, but it's very, very easy. No mysteries, nothing hard. You substitute these back in to either equation, and you can solve for W. And W is equal to AE minus BD. There's a solution, U and V and W. This is going to work. You can check, put them back in the original equations. We've got a vector that's perpendicular to both. That is the cross product. We write this, A, B, C, cross D, E, F equals this expression, B, F minus C, E, second component, minus A, F minus C, D quantity, third component, A, E minus B, D. That's the cross product. Now, it's a messy looking thing. It's got a lot of letters in it, it's kind of long, but it's very, very simple. We got it just from taking dot products and solving, using the most convenient solution we could find. This leads to a nice, simple expression for a vector that gives a normal direction to a plane. That's the solution to our practical problem. To summarize, we have solved the problem of finding a normal direction to a plane in three-dimensional space. That is using the cross product, Again, this is defined as a vector perpendicular to two given vectors. Given A, B, C, D, E, F, the cross product is this quantity, which I won't read to you again. It's there on the screen. The cross product is the standard tool for accessing normal directions in three space and is, is uh, used in many, many applications.